Hi everyone, welcome back. In the previous session, we talked about the basics of the transaction flows at a very high level, right, in general. Today we'll uh, look at it a little bit more in detail. So what I show, I'm showing here is a basic one socket system, how it looks like. So let's go ahead and see if we can name these things here. This whole thing is going to be your processor socket, right? This whole rectangle here is your processor socket. And within the processor socket, we have multiple subsystems in here, right? These are the cores. So I have a eight core socket in here. These, all these cores talk to the system agent, right? We talked about system agent a while back. So this system agent, what it does is, part of its job is to decode the transactions and determine how to send the transactions. So these two blocks in here, these are the memory controllers, right? I have two memory controllers in this socket. And these are connected to a memory channel. Let's say we have two channels behind each memory controller. So it'll be two channels and we're gonna have DDR DIMMs in here. Right, so these are all DIMMs. So we are having two channels and two DIMMs per channel on each memory controller. So I'm gonna have a total of eight DIMMs that I can install in the system. Okay, then we have the IO subsystem here, right? Um, and this also called, we can call this a root complex, a more generic term for this. Um, because it spawns multiple root ports here, right? So I'm gonna call it a root complex. And the system agent will determine if one of these, if one of these cores is sending a transaction, it will determine whether to send it to either of these memory controllers or to send it down to the IO subsystem out of the root complex, right? So this is a very high level diagram of how a single socket system will typically look like, okay? The BIOS programs the system agent and it will specify if a given address belongs to either of these two IMCs or the memory controllers or should it belong to the IO subsystem, okay? Now let's focus on the IO subsystem for a bit here. So when we go back to our first session here, we saw this diagram there. We have this MMIO low here, and we also have MMIO high up uh, about top of high memory here. So these two ranges basically has been set up as belonging to the IO subsystem. So when the BIOS boots, it's going to program the system agent and specify system agent that any address that you see that falls within this range here, right? Shown here as MMIO low and MMIO high, they should basically be sent to the IO subsystem, okay? So now going back here, so within this we have a bunch of PCIe root ports, okay? I'm just calling it a root port. So PCIe root ports basically spawn PCIe bus numbers and there can be PCIe switches or endpoint devices connected to the root ports. Now we'll talk about PCIe in a separate session, but I just want to give you a high level overview of what's going on in here. So when the MMIO range or the address that falls within the MMIO range arrives at the root complex, then it should be claimed by one of these root ports, okay? So each root port will have a register inside the root port. It's called a bar register or a base address register, which again the BIOS programs. Once the BIOS programs the bar ranges in each of these root ports, then the incoming transaction uh, hits the root ports. Each one of them will look it up and see if that transaction is targeting one of the bar ranges within that root port. If so, that root port will claim the transaction. So. If the transaction is not claimed by any of these root ports, then what happens? 
if the transaction is not claimed by any of these root ports then it falls down to a default path in intel terminology it's called a dmi port Uh, this is used to basically send the transaction down to a IO controller hub or a platform controller hub, okay, PCH. So this DMI, right, is basically called, I think, desktop management interface. But think of this as a connection, a physical connection between the processor and the PCH also known as the south bridge okay now the PCH contains multiple devices it will have SATA right your uh, hard disk interface it might have a LAN interface it might have USB interfaces um, it might have a SPI interface um, it might have a LPC interface so a lot of IO devices most of the peripheral devices get connected to the PCH okay so you have your keyboard your mouse your you know LAN your hard disk everything most likely goes through the PCH gets connected to the PCH so then we also have in the spy bus or the serial peripheral interconnect bus this is where the BIOS sits okay called the BIOS flash so again Looking at this, we have a, a decoding that happens at the root port level that's called positive decoding. It means that the transaction is being looked at and if the transaction falls within the range of a root port's bar register, it's claimed by that root port. That's called positive decoding. If a transaction is not claimed by any of the root ports in here, then it goes down the default path. This is called subtractive decoding. Okay. So now we saw that yeah, MMIO range can be split across multiple root ports. Okay, fine. Now what does the root port do with that MMIO range allocated to it? This is how a, a typical endpoint config space looks like. And if you look at these registers, there are multiple bar registers in here. Okay. Now, these bar registers are basically set of range registers that are programmed by the BIOS, saying that this is an address that you can claim as yours. So let's say you go and buy a LAN card or a video card. Let's say video card contains two megabytes of buffer in there. That's your video buffer or a frame buffer. Now, how will you map that memory within that video card into the overall system address space so that the processors can go and access that memory? So that's where this bar registers comes in. So the BIOS will go and specify and say, okay, you need two megabytes of address space. And here is your address space. Okay. So now, whenever a transaction goes to that particular range then it will fall down percolate down through and reach that particular endpoint device and it will map to that frame buffer it has so just to reiterate here let's say we have um, the video card in here right it requires four megabytes so i'm going to say that this range from here to here this four megabytes okay is going to this particular video card so this is how endpoint devices can map their own resources like memory into the system address space so that the processors can go and access that resource. Okay. So I think we should stop here at this point and maybe talk about a little bit more about PCIe in the next session because PCIe is the key to understanding the entire uh, MMIO transaction, how it all flows and comes together. Okay. Thanks everybody.